Hello once again, I'm Emmanuel from Majesty's House of Music and we are going on with our series, our beginner series and in this series I'm assuming that I'm dealing with somebody who has seen the piano for the first time. So far we've done two lessons. If you've not watched the previous lessons, please after this or before you watch this, please just check below in the description you'll see the link to the previous lessons so that you can catch up. This is now the third part. In the first part, I, talk about, I talked about the names of the notes. In the second lesson, I talked about the major scale. And in this lesson, I'm going to talk about intervals along the major scale and chords. Intervals and chords. So after this lesson, you'll be able to understand how chords are formed the different types of chords on the piano and it's good that you get this foundational knowledge now as i said i have a free ebook uh that that ebook is very important because it will help you follow along what i'm teaching here so if you can just go right ahead also in the description area below the video and download my free ebook so that you can follow along this class that would be very helpful for you and for my students who want detailed learning uh, you want a full course beyond what i'm doing here you can order my full beginner's foundational piano course. It's a five hour video course called the foundational piano course. Um, I'll put the link to my website for the course and also my contacts, my email and my WhatsApp number in the description below the video. If you are interested in ordering the full course, please get in touch or get the course directly from our website. So I'll get right into this. I'm going to talk to, you, uh, talk to you about some intervals on the major scale and how we can use those intervals when we are forming our chords. Now, um, music is, uh, when we play music, we are using uh, melodies and harmonies. Now, a melody um, is the movement of tunes, okay? So, um, so. That's the melody okay so you've got to understand melody because that's the tune of the song that's where the song is built up from okay now if you followed up from the other lessons you understand the notes that I'm playing are on the C major scale now the melody of a song usually most of the time moves along that major scale but there are other songs which move along minor scales but that's another level for the beginning part just understand that a majority of songs have melodies that move along the major scale okay like that simple amazing grace melody i was playing okay so you can actually if you're starting to, to learn how to play and you're practicing your major scales just start by playing these melodies find these simple melodies to songs they'll, they'll boost your creativity and your your curiosity okay so for example when i'm on c major scale The C major scale, of course, has all those white notes. Start building up those melodies, okay? G, C, E, C, E, D, C, A, G. G, C, E, D, D, G. simple melody but now we can begin putting chords on top of melodies okay
what I've been playing is just building on the melody using chords. So chords now take you to harmony. Okay, chords now building you up to harmony. So melody is the is the individual notes. For example, when you're playing a flute or a saxophone, those are melodic instruments. Now a piano is an is both a melodic okay, but also more harmonic because now I'm playing lots of chords. So you need to understand how to form those chords and how to apply those chords when you're playing melodies, which chord will be appropriate in what position. So uh, we talked about the major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean the key of C. Just using that to illustrate and to explain. But if you get my full five hour course, I go into detail into these concepts in, in all the other keys, okay? So, <clears throat> chords. First of all, let's understand the intervals, okay? The intervals along a major scale. This is not number one. Not number one, uh, that's called the first. Note number two is called the second. Note number three is called the third. Note number four is called the perfect fourth. Note number five is called the perfect fifth. Note number six is the sixth. Note number seven is the seventh. The note number eight is the octave. Okay, now, note number seven can also be called the major seventh because it's seven, okay, it's the seventh from the root, okay, the major seventh. But then, I want you to realize that we have these other notes which are not in the scale of C, which can also be given specific names in relation to our C major scale. For example, this is not below the seventh is called the dominant seventh. So this interval that we have between C and B flat is called a dominant seventh interval. So this is the major seventh. The major seventh is the B, of course. It's the seventh note from the root. But if we just take it down a half step or a semitone from B to B flat, the interval we have here is called a dominant seventh interval. Now from this interval, I now, I think now you understand where we get dominant seventh chords. We look into those chords, like that is a C dominant seventh chord because of that dominant seventh interval. I'll get into that. Now, we have this major third interval from one to three. The interval between C and E on the C major scale is the major third interval. Now we have another interval which we call the minor third interval. Now, major intervals will give you major chords, but minor intervals will now begin giving you minor chords. Okay, so we have that major interval from C to E. If you want a minor interval, you just bring down the third down a half step. So you bring that E down to E flat, okay? That becomes a minor third interval. That's a major third interval, of course, because it's on the major scale. Okay, so I'm just going to keep the theory aspects here simple, uh, so not going into really, really deep details. Just what you need to understand to help you playing, okay? So, let me um, look about, uh, let, let, me, let me cover a little bit uh, another interval here. So we've talked about the major uh, third interval, minor third interval. So we say this is the perfect fourth from C to F. And then from C to G is the perfect fifth interval, okay? Now, I want you to understand an interval means the distance, not a note, but the distance from the root. This is a perfect fifth because it's five steps from the root, which is the one, our C, okay? It's called the root, the one, okay? You'll hear people talking about the root. It's the one, the one of the scale, which is C. So from C to G, we have a perfect uh, fifth interval. Now, if we bring down this fifth down a half step to this from G to G flat or F sharp. Now, the interval from C to F sharp is called a tritone. So you'll hear people playing tritones, okay? Uh, people are talking about tritone substitutions. Um, it's because of this tritone interval, okay? From C to F, 
Now, something interesting about the Triton interval is that it is the interval that lies exactly in between the scale, okay? If you look at the scale from C to C, that Triton interval means three tones. So you have three tones from C to F sharp, and you also have three tones, exactly three tones, from F sharp all the way up to C. You can even count the intervals of this Triton interval. C to D, D to E, E to F sharp, okay? Three tones, Triton interval. So F sharp to C, C to F sharp. Those are three tones, from F sharp to G sharp, G sharp to A sharp, A sharp back to C. Three tones, three tones, either forward or backwards. So that's called a Triton interval. And it has very significant applications in gospel and jazz as you continue learning, okay? Now, the interval from C to A is the major sixth interval. So you'll hear about major sixth chord. It's just this interval. So once you understand the interval names, when we begin talking about the chords, it will be so simple. So just understand when you hear about a major sixth chord, it's just the interval from one to six. Now we have a minor sixth interval. That means you just take down the A down to A flat. So this becomes minor sixth, major sixth. And then of course we say it from here to here is dominant seventh, then major seventh, and of course the octave interval, okay? So this is the root as the major second interval from C to D, okay? But from C to C sharp is a minor second interval. Major second C to D, down to C to D flat or C sharp is minor second. C to E is major third. C to E flat is a minor third interval. Perfect fourth, triton, perfect fifth, minor sixth, major sixth. Um, it's also called the minor seventh because it's down from the seventh or the dominant seventh. More commonly, uh, we don't talk about minor seventh, but uh, we talk about this interval as a dominant seventh interval. And then the major seventh, then back to the octave. Now, that covers the intervals from number one to number eight using all the notes, including the notes which are not really on the C major scale, okay? So we include the other black notes so that you can understand the intervals, okay? The minor sixth, the dominant seventh, the triton, the minor third, the minor second, okay? Now, let's talk about chords. Now, chords are made up of specific intervals. So we, I believe maybe some of you have, um, have heard about major chords, you've heard about minor chords, you've heard about diminished chords, you've heard about minor seventh chords, you heard about uh, major seventh chords. You heard about dominant seventh chords. You heard about major thirteenth, minor thirteenth chords. Uh, all those kind of chords. Okay, it's very simple. Once you understand this theory, there's no chord that you can't construct. Now, number one, the major chord is the basic chord. You simply play the root, the third, and the fifth. So for example, if I want a C major, C major chord, what is the root? C. What is the third? E. What is the fifth? G. Any major chord you want. Just go to the scale of the chord you want and play the root, the root, the third, and the fifth. C, E, G, for example, gives you a C major chord. This is a harmony of three notes. Normally, the melody, the alto, and the tenor. Okay? Then, the minor chord is made up of the root, which is one, the minor third interval, and the fifth. So what is the root? C. What is the minor third interval? Remember, you bring down the E to E flat. What is the fifth? G. So that becomes a minor chord, C minor, because now you're making the major third interval a minor third interval. So C major, C minor. Let me talk about the third chord, which is called the diminished chord. Now, the diminished chord now has two flats. You have the root, the minor third, and the triton. 
See that? So C, E flat, and F sharp. The root, the minor third, and the triton. Okay? So one, flat three, flat five. So you flatten the third and you flatten the fifth. Flattening a note means bringing the note down by a half step. So these two notes are being brought down. So C major chord, C, E, G. Flatten the third, you get a C minor chord, C, E flat, and G. Then you also flatten the fifth, C diminished chord, okay? C major, C minor, C diminished. Now, those three triads are the basic chords that I'd like you to begin practicing. Okay, and now how I want you to practice this is using my ebook. If you get my ebook, you'll find diagrams of all these chords well listed down. You'll find diagrams. I want you to go through those chords from one key to another, one key to another, and understand how many how many major chords do we have on the piano? Twelve major chords, twelve minor chords, twelve diminished chords. I want you to go through each of those chords one by one in every key so that you can play all those chords in all the keys. So for example, let, let's take an example outside the key of C and usually we've been using the key of G just to explain a little bit. Of course, there are 10 others, but I'm using these two so that you can get the concept from one key to another, okay? Let's go to G major scale, for example. Now, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. Now, we say, if you want to get the major chord, what do you play? The root, the third, and the fifth. The root is G, the third is B, the fifth is D. One, two, three, four, five. So that gives you the G major chord. If you want to get a minor chord, you simply flatten the third. What is the third? Interval is B. So you bring it down to B flat. It becomes a G minor chord because it has the minor third interval. Now, if you want the diminished chord, you'll bring down also the D, which is the fifth down to C sharp, which is a triton interval from the root, okay? So you have G, B flat, and C sharp as the G diminished chord, okay? So G major, G minor, G diminished chord. So the point is this, when you want to find a chord, you have to go to the scale of that key. Get it very clearly. You have to go to the scale of that key and find the numbers from the scale of the key that you are looking at. So if you're looking for chords in, for example, in A, you have to go to A major scale, okay? All these scales are on my ebook, so I don't understand why you should not download the ebook, okay? And it's free. You know, when I started learning piano, uh, it was a big struggle understanding this concept because I had a teacher for very few days and afterwards I had to figure out everything on my own. So when we thank God that for the privilege of the internet and YouTube and all these platforms where you have really no excuse not to get these things done, okay? Information is so much available. There are many other channels also on YouTube that teach these concepts. So I really like you to be passionate about your learning, okay? Just be passionate and be consistent and be patient and get these concepts done. So if I'm playing in the, if I want chords in the key of A, for example, I want an A major chord or an A minor chord or an A diminished chord, I have to go to the A major scale, okay? So I have to go to the A major scale. And then I have to ask myself, okay, if I want A major chord, what is the formula? One, three, five. The root, the third, and the fifth. One, two, three, four, five. A major. If I want the A minor chord, I simply flatten the third. Bring down that C sharp half as a, a, a semitone from C sharp to C. I have A minor. If I want A diminished chord, I'll bring down the fifth down to E flat. So, A major, A minor, A diminished. As simple as that. So once you get the concept, the formula, 
Music is like mathematics. Let me simplify and say that. Music is like mathematics. Once you get a formula, for example, I want to get the, the, the area of a circle. What is the formula of getting the area of a circle? Okay, remember a little bit of mathematics. Pi r squared. What is pi? 22 over 7 or 3.142. What is r? The radius of the circle. Then you square that. That means the radius twice. Now, it doesn't matter if the radius of the circle is 5 centimeters or whether the radius of the circle is 100 centimeters. So long as I have the formula, I can get the area of the circle. So the same thing that we talk about in music. Once you get a formula, you apply the same formula in every situation, in any key. That's why it's so simple to begin learning how to play in all keys. Now, this is for you who have been stuck playing in one key and you are afraid of moving on and learning all the other keys. So long as you have the formula, and I'm going to take time in this series and give you the formulas, give you the formulas. So long as you get the formulas, you, the okay, formulas is not English, I believe, formulae. <laughs> yeah, as long as you have the formulae, apply the formulae to your playing, apply the concept, and you'll get whatever you want to get in any key. So I've just used that illustration of the major minor and diminished chords to show you how you can construct these chords from the knowledge of the major scale. So as I said in the previous lesson, if you don't understand the major scale and the intervals on a major scale, understanding these advanced chords as we move ahead will become very challenging because you don't have the best, the foundation. So take time. If you have to replay this video several times, please do that. Please do that. I'm not rushing in this lesson. You've got to be patient. If you're not patient, then I believe you'll really get tired, but I'll be very slow, very consistent. You can watch this several times so that all these questions get answered because I receive hundreds of questions, okay? So the questions are being answered here. So please be patient and move along with me. So we've covered about uh, the intervals and how to get your major, your minor, and your diminished chords. And what I wanted you to really appreciate is the importance of understanding the major scale and the intervals on the scale, right? Now, there are many other types of chords. You'll begin hearing about major seventh, minor seventh, diminished seventh, dominant seventh. Those are what we call extended chords. Now, those are chords which run for, okay, which have more than three notes. As you've seen, the chords that we've been playing only, only have three notes, okay? But now, when we begin playing the extended chords, for example, if somebody talks about a major seventh chord, C major seventh, just listen first to the word, to the name of the chord, C major seventh. So first, you have your C major, C, E, G. So C major seventh. What is the seventh? B. That means you add that seventh. So now you have a four not chord. C major seventh, C, E, G, B. Now, you hear about a C dominant seventh chord. What's a C dominant seventh chord? Remember, we told you that flat seven is the dominant seventh interval. Okay, C to B flat. So that means you'll have your C major, but now you'll add that B flat. So you have C dominant seventh, C, E, G, B flat. C major seventh, C dominant seventh. All right. Now you hear about C minor seventh chord. C minor seventh. So first of all, you need to get your C minor chord. So what is C minor chord? This is your C major chord, C, E, G. If you want to get the minor chord, of course, we said you flatten that third, you bring it down to E flat. So you have C, E flat, and G. That's your C minor chord. If you want your C minor seventh chord, remember the minor seventh also is still that B flat. This is the major seventh. This is the minor seventh or the dominant seventh. So if you want C minor seventh, you'll play your C minor chord and add that B flat, okay? Okay? Simple theory. So we've looked at the major seventh, we've looked at the minor seventh, 
we've looked at the dominant seventh. Now, up to that stage, I wouldn't want to go so far into chords because there are so many types of chords, okay? Perhaps I'll add you one more chord as a bonus, that is the diminished seventh chord, because you have already talked about the diminished chord. Now, the diminished seventh chord will be this. Now here it's a little bit different because you have your C diminished chord. Of course, from the major chord we said, flatten the third and the fifth, you'll get the diminished chord. So that's the C diminished chord, C, E flat, and F sharp. But if you want the C diminished seventh chord this time, you'll add the sixth note. The sixth note of the scale is also the diminished seventh, okay? Is the major seventh, the B, the minor seventh is the B flat, and the A is the diminished seventh, okay? So I want you to see the progression from major seventh to minor seventh to diminished seventh. So C major seventh, C minor seventh, C diminished seventh. The chord is, is contracting, okay? So that's the C diminished seventh chord. C, E flat, F sharp, and A. One, flat three, flat five, and six. I'm talking in terms of the numbers of the notes on the scale. C is one, E is flat three, F sharp is flat five, because G is five, F sharp is flat five. And A is six, of course. One, two, three, four, five, six. So in this case, I'm introducing you to another concept which we call the number system. So we'll be talking about these notes according to numbers, okay? Because of the numbers of the notes on the scale. So that's the formula of a diminished seventh chord. The one, the flat three, the flat five, and the six. Go to any scale. For example, if you go to, to G and you want a G diminished seventh chord. The one, the flat three, the flat five, and the six. G diminished seventh. So all these notes are coming from the major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the one is G, the three is B. One, two, three, but the flat three is now B flat. The five is D, but the flat five is now C sharp. Then the six is E. That's the G diminished seven. So move from one key to another with the formulas. Understand the formulas of every chord. If you check on my ebook, I've written the formulas of every chord before I explain the diagrams, okay? On each chord. I think that is chapter three or chapter two. I think chapter two of the ebook. You'll find all the diagrams and all the explanations of the formula of getting those chords from the scale. Okay, so I've taken time to explain the chords. In the next section, I'll now introduce you to Mm, another concept which will now build up on this, I'll not see what that will be, but subscribe to my channel. You'll get a, a, a notification when I do the next uh, lesson tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow you have the next video in this series. So please, uh, as I said, if you want a full course, five hours long, covering these concepts in detail, plus much more that you will need to learn, please check the description below the video. You'll find a link to my foundational piano course on my website. And I'll also put my email and my WhatsApp number. You can order those courses from our website or get in touch directly with us. Of course, it's a course you'll need to purchase at a very affordable price, but it's still for your benefit. So I hope as many of you as possible will be able to take advantage of that course. So thank you for watching this lesson and hanging out around with me. I'll see you in the next class tomorrow. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Now there are just a few things I'd like you to do to help us spread this word and support us. The first thing is to go ahead and hit the like button below this video. Just go ahead and hit the like button. And the second thing you can do is to share this uh, video on our social media platforms, on Facebook, on Twitter. Just go ahead and hit the share button so that we help us to spread this message so that more people can get access to these lessons. And the third thing is that if you have been watching my lessons and you're not subscribed to my channel, please just go right ahead right now now, log into Google with your Gmail, okay? With your Gmail, your email address, log into uh, YouTube, and then hit the subscribe button so that you'll always be notified when I release new classes. And then the last thing you can do is to visit our website, majestieshouseofmusic.com, then click on the piano video courses, and you'll see a list of several longer 
detailed courses where I go much deeper into uh, these concepts, okay? So if you visit our website, you can order those courses there online. If you have a PayPal account, if you don't have a PayPal account, you can just send me an email or a WhatsApp message, and then we can communicate on how you can order the courses and how I'll deliver them to you as downloadable files. I'll simply send to you a link and you can download the course that you are interested in. So thank you for following this channel and God bless you. See you in the next class.